According to the average height database, the average height for males is 5 foot 9, and the average height for females is 5 foot 3. Are you near this height? Or are you the short one in your family? How about even too tall? Is your body developing too slowly or won't stop growing? Are you also tired, weak, and clumsy? These may be signs you have a pituitary weakness. Today, we're going to talk about the pituitary gland and what you can do to treat pituitary weakness naturally. For the longest time, we thought genetics played the main role in our health, but that has drastically changed with epigenetics being brought to the mainstream. This brings up an interesting question. Could internal and external environments affect our height? I suspect yes. From what my mentors and I have observed, it appears different environments have a larger impact on our bodies than genetics. Admittedly, in some cases, genetics can be difficult to manage even with epigenetics. Although, you wouldn't believe some of the extreme acidic and genetic illnesses that have been resolved through changing their environment. How many of you have seen short families and immediately assumed genetics was the main cause for their height? What if other factors were actually at play, such as these families living the same lifestyle, eating the same food, family stress, being exposed to the same bacteria, chemical pollutants, and other environmental factors? or, simply put, following the same footsteps as each other. I'm suggesting that lifestyle has a larger impact on the growth and development or destruction of the human body than genetics. Poor nutrition, toxicity, weakened immune systems, and an imbalanced endocrine system from the environment can have a huge impact on the quality and size of our bodies. By changing your environment, you can change your whole body for optimal health. There are two main types of pituitary weaknesses. The first one is hypopituitarism. Hypopituitarism, also known as pituitary insufficiency, is a rare disorder when the pituitary gland doesn't produce enough of its hormones. There are way too many underdeveloped people to say that this condition is by any means rare. It's more common than you may think. Once you become aware of what pituitary weakness is, you will then begin to see it in yourself or in others around you just like I did when I learned about pituitary weakness. I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I can't stop seeing epigenetic disorders everywhere I go. Hypopituitarism can lead to poor body development causing symptoms such as small breasts, short height and small body mass in general, low bone density, hoarseness in voice, such as high pitched or other changes, menstrual irregularities, low sex drive, hormonal imbalance, impotence, weight gain or loss, poor athletic performance, weak muscles, fatigue, dizziness, clumsiness, inability to focus, vision problems, depression, anxiety, hair loss, low blood pressure, low blood sugar, inability to stay warm, sensitivity to cold, and many more symptoms. Next, we have hyperpituitarism, which is the opposite of hypopituitarism. Hyperpituitarism is when the pituitary gland secretes too many hormones, causing an overgrowing body, and other undesirable symptoms. Hypersecretion of pituitary hormones may cause Cushing syndrome, acromegaly, gigantism, abnormally tall height, thick bones, enlarged nose, jaw, tongue, heart, hands, and feet, oily and leathery skin, excessive perspiration, slanting eyes, congested sinus, hollow or deep sounding voice, heart failure, hypertension, muscle weakness, joint pain, hyperthyroidism, diabetes, fatigue, eating too much sleep, sleep apnea, mood changes, impotence, low libido, excess facial hair in women, absence of menstrual cycles, weight gain, vision problems, and many more symptoms. Some of you out there that have a pituitary weakness may only have a select few symptoms that are not severely debilitating, such as those hypo and hyper conditions. I like to consider pituitary weakness a mild version of hypo and hyper. A common example would be small breasts or being short. Once it becomes more advanced, modern medical terms are then used, even though I still believe it's usually better to identify these conditions as pituitary weakness. Once medication is needed, I suppose that's when medical terms become necessary. Hypo and hyperpituitary weakness conditions are mainly treated with the same herbs. 
You also don't need to have all of the symptoms to fit into the pituitary weakness category. The symptoms I mentioned are some of the more prevalent symptoms that you could potentially have. As an example, I mentioned poor athletic performance. It's obviously not a medical term, but I do see it in those with some form of pituitary weakness when coupled with poor body development, weak adrenals, and thyroid, especially in small bodies and those that are clumsy. The most common form of pituitary weakness is being short or having some form of body development issue, oftentimes alongside clumsiness. Take note, again, thyroid and adrenals always seem to be associated with pituitary weakness. This is obviously because the pituitary gland is a master gland. With proper care, these pituitary weaknesses should be manageable. Adaptogenic herbs are perfect for this because they support all glands and not just the pituitary. At some point in our lives, all of us will have a pituitary weakness to some extent. Also, most of the time, hyperpituitarism is actually hypopituitarism. The same goes with hyperthyroidism and even mania caused by hyperadrenalism, which is actually hypoadrenalism. In natural health, hyper is almost always considered a hypo condition under extreme chronic stress. That stress is best explained as acidosis. Think of overstimulation as the body's last resort to protect itself from exhaustion, usually caused by acidosis. Now that you understand the basics of pituitary conditions, let's talk about how the pituitary gland communicates with the body. The pituitary gland is oftentimes called the master gland and for a very good reason. It's responsible for the growth and development of the body and the production and regulation of hormones. It affects nearly the entire endocrine system, also known as the HPAT axis, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, thyroid axis. The pituitary gland communicates with the hypothalamus, which is also considered a master gland, based on its roles to secrete what I like to call precursor hormones. The hypothalamus is a structure located in the forebrain above the pituitary gland. It receives neural signals from the brain and the nervous system, which are responding to internal and external environments. Those signals are then sent to the pituitary gland. There are three different parts of the pituitary gland, anterior lobe, posterior lobe, and intermediate lobe. The hypothalamus interacts with these parts of the pituitary. Hormones created by the hypothalamus are either converted or stored by the pituitary gland to stimulate the production or inhibition of various hormones throughout the body. Here's a list of those hormones and their roles. Gonadotropin releasing hormone, GnRH, is sent to the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary then creates follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH. These hormones are sent to the reproductive organs to stimulate them to produce their specific hormones. Corticotropin releasing hormone, CTH, is sent to the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary then creates adrenocorticotropic releasing hormone, ACTH. This hormone is sent to the adrenal glands to stimulate the release of their specific hormones. Thyrotropin releasing hormone, TRH, is sent to the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary then creates thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. This hormone is sent to the thyroid gland to produce its specific hormones. Growth hormone releasing hormone, GHRH, is sent to the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary then creates growth hormone, GH. This hormone is sent to stimulate the growth of the body and maintenance of bone, muscle mass, and fat distribution. Prolactin releasing hormone, PRH, or prolactin inhibiting hormone, PIH, also known as dopamine, is sent to the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary then regulates prolactin. PRH tells the anterior pituitary to produce prolactin, whereas PIH inhibits the production of prolactin. Prolactin is used to stimulate the production of milk after childbirth, reproduction in men and women, immune system regulation, metabolism, pancreatic development, and 300 more functions in the body. Antidiuretic hormone, ADH, is sent to the posterior pituitary where it's stored and released when needed. 
ADH stimulates the regulation of collecting ducts in the kidneys to retain water. This is very important in the regulation of blood pressure, glucose levels, salts in the blood, and maybe even kidney lymph filtration. Oxytocin, OT, is sent to the posterior pituitary where it's stored and released when needed. Oxytocin is needed for sleep cycles, social bonding, sexual reproduction, and during and after childbirth. Melanocyte stimulating hormone MSH is produced in the anterior pituitary and the intermediate pituitary. MSH stimulates the production and release of melanin, which most of us know affects skin color. As you can tell, these hormones are extremely important for every aspect of the body. So important that hormone maintenance is the main part of my longevity protocol. Without a healthy HPAT axis, the endocrine system stress response of our internal and external environment will be impaired, ultimately affecting the structure of the body and much more. The tough part is that these hormones are directly affected by the environment, which is currently extremely toxic. We can consider the environment endocrine disruptors. This includes physical, mental, and chemical stress. That's why I use adaptogenic herbs in my protocol to help regulate the HPAT axis. Adaptogens give your body the ability to adapt to your environment. A well-regulated HPAT axis will in return help create an overall healthy regulating system for optimal wellness. That regulating system includes things such as the immune system, body structure, mental health, disease resistance, aging, and so forth. Don't worry about trying to memorize all of the hormones and their roles. All you need to remember is that these two master glands, hypothalamus and pituitary, are responsible for the production and regulation of the endocrine system. Try to familiarize yourself with the HPAT axis, as I will be mentioning it quite frequently in my videos. Hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, thyroid axis. Pituitary cases. Some of these pituitary cases are often seen as growth abnormalities in the body such as scoliosis and other forms of misplaced body structure. This is usually managed by focusing on diet, pituitary, thyroid, adrenals, and chiropractic care. If lymph system is backed up in the neck, you will definitely see scoliosis. Body overgrowth symptoms can happen very slowly over time and go unnoticed to the point that it's too late to restore the parts of the body that have been overgrown. Adaptogens could have been used to prevent these such cases, but unfortunately, most people won't know they have an overgrowth slowly occurring due to lack of education. That's the reason why adaptogens should be used as a daily supplement. Adaptogens manage hormonal stress, so these symptoms never occur, and if they do occur, they could potentially be less damaging. What's great about these herbs is that they help regulate all of the endocrine glands and not just the pituitary, assuming you've also eliminated other environmental stressors affecting your body. One of the most popular herbs for pituitary conditions is chase tree berry, although the debate regarding it being an adaptogen is still going on. If you suspect a pituitary weakness, definitely try chase berry. This herb is especially good for individuals with overly high libido, hence the name chaste, meaning not having any sexual nature or intention. It can also be used for low libido. Chase berry has been shown to regulate hormonal changes in both men and women. If you'd like to learn more about chase berry, then be sure to check out my video, The Health Benefits of Vitax Chase Tree Berry. If herbs are not enough, you may want to try a pituitary glandular. I'm not going to explain it in depth because I believe glandulars should be taken under the supervision of a health practitioner that can monitor your hormone levels. Glandulars are very potent medicines that shouldn't be used without professional supervision. Diet and detox. If you decide to focus on a natural approach to support your pituitary, before trying any type of supplement, you need to remember how important diet and detox is. You need a nutrient and calorie dense diet with a variety of foods that help aid in detoxification, preferably fruits and vegetables. As weird as this may sound, sadly it seems a lot of people switching to new, healthier diets don't take nutrition or proper detoxification into consideration even when they think they are. This leaves them depleted of vital nutrients needed for growth and 
development. Don't be afraid to eat a certain way, even when a group of extremists try to tell you that your diet is bad. Follow the data, ethics, and well-educated personal beliefs. Also, be sure to use chronometer to simply calculate the nutrients in the foods that you eat. There's a link in the description below. Hang upside down. One last thing you can do to support pituitary function is inversion. Hang upside down to increase blood flow. In return, this ensures enough circulation gets to the hypothalamus and pituitary to function properly. This may explain why inversion is so popular in yoga, kung fu, qigong, and other physical forms of life extension practices. Well, that's it for this video. There are a lot of other factors to take into consideration with how the body gets affected, but this video is a great place to start. Do you have a pituitary weakness? Have you tried Chase Berry or other endocrine supporting herbs? Leave a comment below and let the community know. Be sure to hit like on this video like your life depends on it. Share this video with someone you feel may be able to benefit from this information. Subscribe to my channel if you are new. I upload numerous health videos that you won't want to miss. Join my newsletter for product giveaways and additional health tips. If you're shopping for herbal supplements and lifestyle products, then be sure to check out sungazerherbs.com. Shopping at Sungazer Herbs will support your wellness and my channel. As always, I'm Brandon Goji, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay motivated, you urban survivors. Those that are clumsy. The most common form of pituitary weakness is